one thing that's kind of annoying about antiderivatives is that you always have this plus c that shows up. What is this? I mean, we sort of understand procedurally why uh, an antiderivative can have a plus c, because if you check your antiderivative, the derivative of this plus c is going to be 0. But um, it's sort of a little trickier to understand conceptually why does this plus c appear. So maybe to understand that, what we should do is um, reinterpret the idea of an antiderivative in terms of um, slopes of tangent lines. So if we start with the function f, what does the antiderivative of f mean? Well, this is a function, which we've been calling capital F, whose derivative, which is capital F prime, is f of x. But that means it's a function f of x whose tangent line at x has slope f of x, right? if we interpret it in terms of graphs. So um, what we can do to figure out what this plus c is doing is think about a f starting with a function and then looking at functions that whose tangent lines uh, our slopes of tangent lines are given by the function we started with. So here's an example. Um, it's set up a little unfortunately in that GeoGebra wants to call the derivative function f prime instead of f, and the original function or the antiderivative little f instead of capital F. Um, so if this is the function we start with, then its antiderivative looks like this, right? The antiderivative of x is 1 over x squared, um, and the slope of every tangent line on this derivative graph, the green one, the slope on the green graph is given by the height of the blue graph. Well, uh, so what about the plus c? Well, here's another copy of that antiderivative graph. And what I can do is have a slider for this function g of x that will be my value for c. So right now, it's z c is 0, so, um, so there's no plus anything over here. So what I'm going to do is change c. And remember, what makes this orange graph an antiderivative of the blue graph is the fact that uh, slopes of tangent lines on the orange graph are the same as heights on the blue graph. Right? So as we change c, visualize what happens to the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay, So here we go, changing c. Now, at any given point, if you say keep track of this spot right here at x equals 1, as we, move the, as we change c, the graph is just moving up and down. If the graph just moves up and down, does that change the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1? Well, no. Shifting a graph up and down doesn't change the slope of any tangent line. And that means that as c changes, the derivative of this orange graph is always the same. Well, if the derivative of the orange graph was this blue one to begin with, then the derivative of the orange graph is still the blue graph, even after we've shifted it. This is a little easier to see if, instead of looking at one antiderivative at a time, we actually look at many of them all at once. So uh, here is many antiderivatives. Right? These are all that same graph, but just shifted up and down different amounts. And what we can do is plot the slopes of many tangent lines. Right? So here are all of the tangent lines to all of these antiderivatives at the same x-coordinate. And you can see all of these tangent lines, they all have the same slope. Even if we move the point where we're looking at the uh, slopes of the tangent lines, all of the slopes change, but they change together. And that means that all of these functions have the same derivative function because the slope of their tangent line is always the same at every x value. And indeed, this is set up so that the derivative of all of these green graphs is this blue graph. So what this is telling us is that uh, this plus c that shows up, that's showing up because shifting a graph vertically 
does not change the slope of the tangent line to a graph, and so it won't change the derivative either. So that's what the plus c is in all of our antiderivatives. It's just a vertical shift 